I want to help you make more money in your company. And one of the ways you can do that is by licensing. Now, as always, make sure you have a copy of my new book, Your First Million, next to you on your desk. Make sure you have your journal and something to write with so that you can take notes while you're listening to this. And this is going to be a deep dive. Licensing is a powerful strategy for generating passive income by allowing other businesses to use your product, service, or content in exchange for a fee. It involves granting permission to other companies to use your IP, intellectual property, while you retain ownership. This arrangement can provide for a steady stream of income without the need for continuous effort on your part. It can cover a broad range of IP, including inventions, brand names, and software. The three main types of licensing are patents, trademarks, and proprietary software. Patents protect inventions. They provide exclusive rights to the inventor for a specific period. By licensing patents, companies can monetize their innovations without producing the products themselves. Trademarks protect brand names, logos, slogans. Licensing trademarks allows other businesses to use your brand identity. This is often seen in franchising and merchandise deals. And then software. Software licensing involves granting rights to use software under specific terms. This can be done through models such as software as a service, SaaS, or perpetual licenses. Some real world examples of patents are Qualcomm, which licenses its wireless communication patents to various smartphone manufacturers. This allows companies like Apple and Samsung to use Qualcomm's technology in their devices and it makes huge revenue for Qualcomm. Another example is IBM. It holds numerous patents in various technologies. One big example is their licensing of semiconductor technologies to other tech companies. Another great example is Pfizer. They've patented various pharmaceutical products. By licensing its patents for drugs to other pharmaceutical companies, Pfizer enables the production and distribution of these medications worldwide while earning royalties on sales. Real-world examples of trademarks, Disney, they license their iconic characters and logos for use in merchandise, theme parks, and media. You've seen them everywhere. Another example, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola licenses its brand for use in a variety of products beyond beverages, like clothing, accessories, and other promotional items. Another big example is the NFL. They license their team logos and trademarks to clothing companies, merchandising companies, and more. If you're getting value from this video, you may be the perfect candidate for my new community, Arlen's All Access. Over the next 12 months, I am teaching 100 people how to make an extra $100,000. In my Arlen's All Access community, I will help you grow your personal brand, unique skills, network, and impact to add at least $100,000 to your income within 12 months. Go to the link in the description below to join while there's still room. An example of software is Microsoft, who licenses its Windows operating system and office suites to other businesses and consumers. Adobe, who licenses its Creative Cloud suite. And Oracle, which licenses its database software to enterprises for use in their IT infrastructure. You can probably already see how lucrative this could be for you. And I bet the juices are flowing and the ideas are coming. If you're interested in licensing yourself, I want to help you by taking you on a step-by-step -step guide of the process. First, you want to identify potential licensees. You're going to research and do some market analysis. So just like everything we do, we're going to do some thorough market research and identify the businesses that could benefit from your intellectual property. You're going to network. You're going to leverage your industry connections. And if you don't have them, what did I tell you? You're going to do salons. You're going to meet people at trade shows. You're going to join professional associations and meet new potential licensees. Hey, there are no excuses. If you feel like there are no excuses left, type no excuses in the comments right now and subscribe. Step two, you're going to prepare your IP. You're going to get legal protections to ensure that your IP is legally protected. This is probably going to involve filing for your patent, your trademark, or your copyrights. Then you're going to maintain comprehensive documentation of your IP, including all the development history, the ownership, and any prior use. 
You're also going to want to conduct an IP valuation to understand its market worth and set realistic expectations for licensing fees. All this is within your reach. I know it sounds like a lot, but listen, everybody starts somewhere. And if you don't have time, you spend money. If you don't have money, you spend time. Put that in the comments right now if you agree and make sure you subscribe. Step three, you're going to develop a licensing strategy. So you're gonna clarify what you want to achieve through licensing. Is it revenue generation, market expansion, brand recognition, or something else? Maybe it's a combination. Then you're going to choose the appropriate model. Is it exclusive or non-exclusive? That means can only one group buy it and no one else can buy it, or can it be used by a few people? Are there fixed fees, flat rates? Are you getting royalties or both? These are just a few examples of what you're going to have to decide. You're also going to think about pricing. You have to establish a pricing structure that's based on the value of your IP, the market conditions, your business goals. Make sure you have legal representation helping you along the way. If you can't afford legal representation right now, you're going to do what I call becoming money. If you don't have money and money attracts money, you become money. So what that means is while you're working on stacking so that you can afford legal representation, you're going to do what is within your power, which is what I did when I was homeless and broke. Learn every single day. They can't take that away from you. So if you learn every single day, you research, you work on what we're talking about here, what you've written down in your notes, when you have opportunity, you'll be ready to meet it. Step four, create a licensing agreement. You want to draft a licensing agreement that includes some of the following. Scope of rights. You're going to define what IP is being licensed and the extent of the licensee's rights, their usage rights, exclusivity, territories like we talked about. The next element is duration. Specify the term of the agreement, including start and end dates. Compensation. Detail the payment terms such as upfront fees, royalties, minimum guarantees, and payment schedules. Performance obligations. Outline the responsibilities of both parties, including marketing, reporting, and quality control. Termination conditions. Define the conditions under which the agreement can be terminated, such as breach of contract or non-payment. Dispute resolution. Include provisions for resolving fights, like mediation, arbitration, or litigation. Step five. Now that you've found the licensee, you've decided what you're going to license, and you have put your ducks in a row, you're going to negotiate terms. Present your licensing agreement to the potential licensee. Be prepared to explain the value of your IP and justify the proposed terms. Then you're going to have discussions to address their concerns and adjust terms as needed. You want to aim for a win-win outcome that benefits both parties. Be flexible and be willing to make concessions on the less critical points, the things that are not as important to you, while standing firm on the key terms, the most important terms. Step six is finalize the agreement. Make sure you have the final draft of the agreement reviewed by a legal professional to make sure that it is legally sound and protects your interests. Do not skip this part. Both parties are going to sign the agreement to make it legally binding. Make sure you have all the necessary parties included in the signing process. And then keep a copy of the signed agreement and any related documents in a secure and accessible location. And make sure at least one other person knows how to get this information. Step seven, implement and manage the agreement. So there's onboarding that happens after the signature. You're gonna provide the licensee with any necessary training they may need, resources, or support to effectively use your IP. And remember, IP is intellectual property. You're going to monitor the licensee's use of your IP to ensure compliance with the agreement. This can include site visits, audits, and performance reviews. And then you're gonna report. Require that the licensee submit periodic reports on the sales, usage, and other relevant metrics. This data is used to calculate your royalties and assess performance. Remember, the more data we can collect and information we can have, the better decisions we can make. Step eight, maintain the relationship. Make sure you have an open and regular communication cadence with the licensee the person who bought the license, to address any issues, give updates, and just foster a positive working relationship. Offer ongoing support and resources to help the licensee succeed. 
This can include marketing materials, technical advice, and promotional support. Periodically evaluate the licensing agreement to ensure that it meets your objectives. Be open to renegotiating these terms if market conditions or business needs change. And then step nine, handle renewals and terminations. As the agreement nears its end, discuss renewal options with the licensee. Evaluate their performance and decide whether to extend the agreement, modify the terms, or seek new licenses altogether. If the agreement is not renewed or is terminated, ensure that all IP rights are returned to you and that the licensee ceases to use your IP. Make sure you address any outstanding payments or obligations. Now, you may be really interested in this, but you're wondering, how exactly can I apply this to my company? So I wanted to give you some examples that are clear that are a case study or two. The first one is if you are an HR company. And remember, you can apply this to your company if it's similar. One way that you could license your IP is to HR software providers. Companies like Greenhouse, Lever, or Workable could license your advanced algorithms, or let's say you have a proprietary candidate selection tool, and they could license that from you. Or let's say providers like Bamboo HR, Zenefits, or ADP. They might be interested in licensing your HR analytics tool, your employment engagement surveys, or performance management modules. Another type of licensee who could be interested in your HR product for licensing is a large recruiting firm like Robert Half, Manpower, or Ronstadt. They could license your specialized assessment tools, your databases, or your recruitment software to enhance their own service offerings. Niche recruitment agencies could do the same, but theirs could be focused on specific industries or job types such as IT or healthcare, and they might license your industry-specific HR solutions, like a skills testing platform or a compliance tracking systems. Another great licensee for an HR company, and remember, try to apply this to your own company, is a corporate HR department. So huge multinational companies like IBM, Google, Amazon, they could license your employee onboarding programs, diversity and inclusion training modules, or performance evaluation frameworks. A training and development company, like a corporate trainer like Dale Carnegie or Franklin Covey, Skillsoft, etc., they could license your proprietary training materials, e-learning platforms, or leadership development program. Speaking of e-learning platforms, an e-learning platform could be a great licensee. Coursera, Udemy, or LinkedIn Learning might want to license your HR-specific course, certification programs, or learning management systems. In a lot of cases, they'll license this from you, or they'll have you film something specific to their platform. It's the same kind of thing, really. You're taking your IP, you're creating some asset for them one time, and then they buy that from you and use it while you're doing something else. Management consulting firms, professional associations, trade associations, other tech companies, educational institutions, universities, colleges, etc., franchises, chain businesses, all could use your IP. Government agencies, local, state, and federal, could license your HR IP. Now, let's say you have something more physical like a beauty brand. A large cosmetic company like L'Oreal, Estee Lauder, Procter & Gamble, Fenty, etc. could license your proprietary formulas, your unique packaging designs, or your innovative beauty technologies. A retail chain like a department store, Macy's, Nordstrom's, Bloomingdale's, they could license your exclusive beauty lines. They could create co-branded collections to sell in their stores. Ulta Beauty could license your exclusive or limited edition products to offer unique selections to their customers. High-end salons and spas could license your professional grade products, offering them as part of their services or for retail sale to clients. Beauty schools, beauty influencers, celebrities, health and wellness brands, fashion brands, global brands, luxury goods, retailers, lifestyle brands, travel and hospitality, the list goes on and on. Let's say you don't have a full-fledged company with all kinds of IP, but you do have an online course that you've worked really hard to create, and a lot of people have taken the course, they've done well with it, and it's something that you think other people could use. Could you license that? Yes, you could. Think about it. Educational institutions like universities, colleges, even community colleges, professional associations like the American Marketing Association or Project Management Institute, trade associations like for realtors, corporate training programs like Google, Microsoft, etc., 
and even small to medium-sized enterprises who are looking to provide professional development opportunities to their staff, they might license your courses to enhance their training programs. Again, Udemy, LinkedIn, Skillshare. You might even try Masterclass. Educational nonprofits like the Melinda Gates Foundation, they could use what you have. Public education programs, media companies that need content. It doesn't have to just be about educating and HR and things of that nature. This could be any type of course that you have created that is then used by other people. And you would think about what do those other people have in common? Are they of a certain profession, certain age, certain demographic, certain psychographic? And remember, if we don't remember what psychographic means, we're going to look that up because we're going to use that term a lot in these courses. What sets your students apart? What do they all have in common? When you start to pull back at that thread, that's how you decide what types of licensees you could go after. Now, there could be some challenges to licensing if you're not prepared. So I wanted to make sure you knew what to look for. You might run into a disagreement regarding the interpretation of contract terms, like the scope of usage, the payment structures, et cetera. You want to overcome this by having clear contracts, getting legal advice, and using dispute resolution. You want to always try to have mediation before you have litigation. You want to talk it out before you go to court. Another challenge might be that the licensee may not adhere to the agreed upon terms. So you overcome that by having regular audits, monitoring their systems, and then enforcing actions if need be. Market changes might also affect value. Technological advances or shifts in consumer preferences can impact the value of the licensed IP. So you want to have flexible agreements that can change with those changes. You want to diversify your licensing portfolio, just like anything else in business. Don't count on one thing to be your make or break. And then constantly do market research. Market research is our friend. Information is our friend. I think that when Beyonce says, come on, ladies, let's get in formation, she's also saying, let's get information. Now, you want to protect your intellectual property with legal protections, like the patents, the trademarks, the copyrights we've talked about, NDAs, so non-disclosure agreements. You're not going to send NDAs to investors, by the way. This is a little tip for me because we don't really like NDAs because we see so many different companies. But an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, is a really great tool to have when you're talking to someone seriously about licensing. I hope you're excited to get started. The very next thing you're going to do is make a big decision. Are you going to do a patent? a trademark, or SaaS, software as a service. Once you make that decision, the rest is up to you. So start researching and planning. And if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. Check back for more information about how you can add revenue streams to your company.